I'll shut up and bring on our, our first uh, presenter. Please welcome Pedro Cardoso. So today I'm going to talk about climate change and show you guys three really simple ways we can have a positive impact on it in a daily basis. But first I would like to tell a story. In the night of May 14th of last year, my friend Felipe and I, not this Felipe, the other Felipe there, that Felipe, my friend Felipe and I were driving back from downtown, we're going up. Grand Avenue, turning left on Pennsylvania Avenue, when we got hit by a car, spinning at 100 miles per hour. As you guys can imagine, or might have heard, we both were seriously injured. Felipe cut his forehead and broke his sternum bone. He was in the hospital for a few days, and I had intestinal tears, internal bleeding, and I had to go through surgery. And I remember before getting into surgery, just praying to God and surrendering to God's will. And accepting my faith, whatever it was going to be. And so I went through surgery. I stayed in induced coma for a few hours. And finally, and thankfully, I woke up. So I woke up in the next morning. And despite of the physical discomfort that I was feeling, I was feeling this really deep sense of happiness, like I had never, ever experienced before. So in the next morning and the following days, I had this realization that I was given a second chance in life. And that woke me up to the fact that I'm here in this planet, in this life, in this earth, to serve something, something larger than myself. That's when everything came together and the climate change issue jumped in front of my eyes. As most of us I was aware and informed about it, but never really stepped up. My family had been involved with it, so is my country, Brazil, that has the largest rainforest in the world. So after the accident, it hit me. In not only the car, but it hit me in my mind that uh, that was the thing. That was the thing I had to do. So I started to get more interest, more informed, and that movement kept growing to the point that I worked in an activism campaign right before the election. Which, by the way, if I bug a few of you guys by the time, sorry about that. But anyway, I worked in an activism campaign right before the elections. So when I heard of the Jimmy Talks idea, I felt strongly called to come here and share this message, share this story with you guys. So, I am here today, as I said, to talk about climate change and offer some really, really simple solutions that can potentially benefit our world and our community, regardless of our personal beliefs. So, as we all know, we're educated students. In order to fix the problem, we have to better understand it first, right? So here are some facts that uh, help me to have a better grasp, better understanding of climate change, and also made me care even more about it. So even though we see climate change as a controversial issue, I have found that 75% of the scientific community, 75% of the scientific community agrees that climate change is not only real, but it's caused by us, humans, and our activities. I have also found that 13 of the 15 hottest years on record have all occurred since 2000. And that the CO2 levels in the atmosphere are the highest it has ever been in the past 650,000 years. 
and that every year climate change contributes to the deaths of nearly 400,000 people and costs more than a trillion dollars to our world's economy. So the next question is, what actually causes climate change? And the answer is a really simple cause, concept called the greenhouse effect, that most of us have heard about. As I said, a really simple concept. So every time you drive our car, buy or watch a TV, or eat a piece of steak, we're directly or indirectly emitting greenhouse gases into, a, into the atmosphere and negatively affecting the Earth's natural balance. And that's pretty much all there is to climate to the greenhouse effect. So with higher greenhouse gases concentration in the atmosphere, the temperature becomes warmer. And with warmer temperatures, the polar ice caps rapidly melt. And among other things, they cause the sea level to rise. With higher sea level and temperature, evaporation increases, causing floods and droughts, resulting hundreds of thousands of deaths and billions of dollars spent in natural disaster And the time today only allows me to give you guys a very, very simple overview of a much, much, much more complex issue. There's so much more to it than I could ever attempt to explain it only 12 minutes. So I'd like to invite you guys to make your own research about it and explore climate change's causes and consequences more in depth and find why do you guys care about it. But the bottom line here today is to understand that emitting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere causes severe and negative consequences, environmental, social, and economic consequences, as I said. So in order to tackle this issue, we need to find ways to decrease these emissions. So with that in mind, and I came up with three really simple solutions that we all can take part on in order to decrease these emissions. And they are walking to McDonald's, turning off the lights, and stopping food waste. And I'm going to go over one by one. But before I do that, I would like to say that all the math that will be shown throughout this presentation has been reviewed and approved by Professor Luke Bennett. Professor Luke Bennett is the head of the math department here at Grandview, and he has kindly helped me in this presentation. I know if Professor Luke is here today, but anyways, thanks, Professor Luke. So I started with walking to McDonald's. And I'm gonna ask you guys, to please show your hands if you have recently driven to McDonald's Subway, Village Inn, or any other nearby restaurants to go grab food. Yeah, we all do that. We all do that. In fact, I have found that 26% of the US greenhouse gas emissions come from driving. So, coming back, let's take the McDonald's as an example. It's a really short drive from our campus, about 1.2 miles. Okay? So let's say, in average, and I know some people do that more often, but let's say, in average, a graduate student drives to McDonald's two times a week to go grab food. Then, in four years, that student would have driven about 300 miles. So far, so good, nothing, nothing surprising. Then, I asked myself, what would happen if 500 students decided to not drive to McDonald's, so walk, or share a ride with someone, and I have found that 53.23 metric tons of CO2 would not be emitted into the atmosphere if only 500 students did just that. 500 students, it's about half of our on-campus population, one-fifth of our total campus population. So a pretty significant impact for a very, very small adjustment in our lifestyle. Just to illustrate that, 53.23 metric tons with as much as about a million Big Macs combined. So just to kind of give you guys a picture of the size of the impact. The second way to decrease greenhouse gas emissions on campus is by turning off the lights. So again, I would like to ask you guys, who here, who of you guys have the habit of turning off all of your dorm lights, all of your dorm lights before going to bed? Please show your hands. 
Yeah, a lot of us, a lot of us, I guess the majority of us don't have this habit. But habit can make a huge difference. So in this case, I researched about what would happen if every resident of the L apartments decided to turn off their lights before going to bed. So if every room in the L apartments has two light bulbs, those two light bulbs are left on per night, every night, then throughout the school year, about 17,000 pounds of CO2 will be emitted into the atmosphere, costing about $1,500 to grab. That means by simply turning off the lights, not only saves a huge amount of CO2, or emits a huge amount of CO2, but also increases room and board costs by $1,500. So again, a very, very simple adjustment in our lifestyle can have a huge impact in our world, in our environment, and in this, in this case, in our own pockets. The third way to decrease greenhouse gas emissions on campus is by stopping food waste. And these are scenes that we all see in the cafeteria every day. It was not hard for me to take these pictures at all. In fact, every day, 350 pounds of food are wasted in our community, 350 pounds. Over the year, 40 tons of food are wasted at Granville. In order to produce all of this food, almost 100 tons of CO2 are emitted into the atmosphere. About 2 million gallons of water are wasted. And about 43 hectares of land are used simply to produce food that is being thrown away every day. So simply by being more mindful and taking only what we would eat can significantly decrease our greenhouse gas emissions and in this case even water waste. So I have pointed out how we are part of the causes of climate change and now we can choose to be a part of the solutions. So if 500 students decided to walk to McDonald's, if only the L's residents turn off their lights before going to bed, and if we cut food waste close to zero, then in four years, 155 tons of CO2 would not be emitted into the atmosphere. Eight million gallons of water would be saved, and 169 hectares of land would not be consumed. So a car accident that almost killed me woke me up to the fact that our planet needs our help. You guys don't need a car accident to wake you up. What will wake you up? How you respond? I'll leave that up to you. Thank you very much.